much. I'm Mallory. Uh, this is Jonathan and this is Lisa. Unfortunately, Anthony wasn't able to be here today, um, but we just chose to do our project on the best area in Toronto for new immigrants to settle. Okay, so the purpose of this was to determine the best ward in Toronto for new immigrants to settle, and it's depending upon their unique characteristics. So this includes their age, the country they're coming from, uh, the number of children they have, and their average income per year in Canadian dollars. Um, so this is to help uh, new immigrants assimilate into Canadian culture, and this should make it easier for them and faster for them. And this is also to uh, help avoid potential conflict with those already established in the community. Uh, this is by finding similarities between them so that they can help each other learn and grow. Um, we used a few different um, sources to help us create the program and the presentation. We first looked at the data sets that were given to us, but we realized that half of the information that we needed was from 2007, the other half was from 2011. Um, the, we thought the 2007 was a little bit outdated and we also didn't want to mix up the years, so we decided to look for other reliable sources. We used the ward files located on the City of Toronto website, and this helped us gather information. We also used the ward profiles located on the City of Toronto website to help us find links to other data, including Excel spreadsheets and PDF files. Uh, so the data that we used, it was um, different from the ones that we were given because um, it, the ones that we were given was broken up into neighborhoods, and there was about 100, there was 100, 140, I believe, three of them. And we looked at that and we thought, okay, for a new immigrant coming in, um, this specific neighborhood might not be good for them because they want a choice, as well as the years. Uh, so we went with the data from the other data, and if you look at the map, um, this is two overlay maps. They show um, the neighborhoods and the wards. So as you can see, the wards are actually the neighborhoods blocked together. Uh, so this will give the uh, subject choice of neighborhoods in each ward. And if you look at uh, on the right-hand side, there's the uh, small expert from the data that we used. Um, this is the population by age group for ward number one, which is Etobicoke North. Um, and this is actually some of the data we used to create our program. Okay, so because there was such a large amount of data there was um, for each individual ward, we took it and we made a spreadsheet um, which made it easier to look at all the data together. And we separated that data onto a scale or a bracket. So if you look at the income bracket chart, um, that's one of the ones we separated by bracket and we had high, medium high, uh, medium low, and low income brackets. And then if you look on the other side, um, there's two different charts and they show um, the population of young adults and the Asian immigrant population. And these were um, recreated for each individual ward, so there's uh, quite a few more of these. Um, and they show uh, in percent the population per ward. Okay, the program we created, find this ward, takes into account four variables, which are their birth region, their income, their age, and their number of children. Initially, each ward is assigned a variable, and these variables are then sent through a series of tests in which they gain points depending on the inputted data on either a scale or bracketed system. I will begin with explaining how we broke down the income per ward. As stated before, um, as stated before, we broke the income down into brackets, as it had very little outliers, making the bracket system a great representation of the data. Following this, we need to decipher which bracket the inputted data um, fell into. Once we figured this out, um, using greater and less than, obviously, um, then we uh, then each ward inside this bracket received four points and the adjacent brackets received two points. Um, just to note, each bracket was roughly $5,000 apart. Um, the, the country of origin section was broken down into eight categories based off languages and cultural differences between re regions. The categories we selected were the Middle East, the UK, Asia, Oceania, Europe, Latin America, which we used as South America, Central America, and Mexico, um, the USA, and Africa. For this section, the USA was disregarded because different sections of the US were so polarizing and their culture so similar to ours. We thought that it wouldn't be fair to add them into this, so we gave them full points. Um, we broke down the rest of the words on a customized scale as they received points um, capped off at four based on the gain of a numerical value. For example, in this chart, um, for Asia, in which case 1% 1, 1 is equal to half a point. So the top few, the top few um, in this chart, the top few wards would have gained a total of four points, where I believe the, the lowest one wouldn't have even gained one uh, half a point. Um, lastly, we broke down uh, second last. We broke down the age category. We divided this into four divisions: young adults, 
adults, which is 30 to 49, middle age, which is 50 to 69, and senior citizens, which is 70 plus. And we broke down the percentage of the population that was represented uh, for each one of these per ward. With, with, with this info, we assigned points per ward based on a customized scale for each section as the age groups of the whole of Toronto vary, so we couldn't use half a point is equal to 10 um, percent for all of them. Um, one of the examples is for middle age, one point was equal to 10 percent. And again, this is capped off at four points. And lastly, for the children, we use the exact same method as we did for the um, as as we did for the age grouping, um, except it only became an effect if the number of children they had was greater than one. At the end of this, we had at the end of this we had uh, just a number, and we needed to convert this into percent to make it easier to comprehend. And we did this by dividing by 12 normally, or 16 if the children um, was activated, and then multiplying it by 100. Um, at the end of this, we just needed a way to display it, so we. So uh, we just need a way to display it. So we added all the wards to a list and printed the max of the list. And that showed us all of the wards um, that are equal to the list as well as the score. Also, there was, there's an option to print all of them and that's how we got the graphs for all the scores. Okay, so um, because we created the program, we needed to test it. So we did a couple of um, test subjects. The first one is a 35 year old single man. Um, he's immigrating to Toronto from France and his annual income is 64000 and he has no children. Um, so if you look at the input, um, the Europe stands for the area that he comes from. Um, his income is the next um, input. 34, it, th sorry, 35 is his age. Um, zero stands for how many children he has. And then no shows whether or not we want to list all of the possible results. Um, so this is a graph showing all of the results. The score.